There is much to be learned from people who have lived on this land much longer than we have. A knowledge that manifests itself not only in their relationships with nature, their songs and epics, their technology and creations, but in their very survival. Only by being aware of this heritage of the indigenous can we find not only our roots, but our direction. Their pride and ours, captured in one word, Dayao. I am standing in a gallery in our National Museum surrounded by works created by the Islamic peoples of Mindanao. To us, these are beautiful artworks, coveted for their beauty and their exoticism. But any work of art, any piece of culture becomes all the more beautiful when it is meaningful. And the deeper meanings of these works are bound intrinsically to the cultures that brought these to life. Meaningful connections can only come when we listen to the stories of these works, when we understand the circumstances of their creation, the mindsets of craftsmen who created them, the motifs and the symbols, the experiences and memories, the processes. And only then will we understand that these are more than just beautiful. They are significant and important sources of Dayao, our knowledge, our pride. Iconic is the word for the Ifugao Bulul, a symbol so prevalent as it has appeared on coffee labels, t-shirts, works of contemporary art, even as a logo of a local film festival. The Ifugaos are renowned for having a pantheon of some 2,000 deities, all who were invoked for various rituals and practices that marked the stages, relationships, and cycles of their life. The Bulul deities were called on the final stages of the rice harvest. Yaton oti ayap pini piom ni hak yang awah tinoka ite ki hot tawang anito nompe ot hamwe ot kato hen hap yen at lokep in lap lap. In a series of rituals called Lukia, they are doused with the blood of sacrificial animals and laid out on reed mats together with the first sheaves of rice, heirloom jars, ritual containers, and the sacrificial animals. Bulul came in pairs, male and female, and were believed to safeguard the granaries and ensure the multiplication of the rice harvest. The Bulul were carved from the trunks of the sacred Nara trees, pre-selected through a process of divination. Traditionally, the carving of Bulul was characterized for its secrecy. Those wealthy enough to have them commissioned were required to feed the carvers, often priests, during the carving. When they were finished, the male and female statues would be brought to the alang, or granary of the owners, where a feast was given for the village. Thus, the privilege of owning bulul came with the obligation to feed kin and village. For traditional Ifugao, Bulul figures are associated with times of plenty, of bountiful harvests, 
that the Bulul deities would ensure year after agricultural year. These days, though many Ifugao families still choose to hold on to their Bulul figures, many are carved for the tourist trade. More than easily appropriated images, these deities represent long-standing traditions that mark the Ifugao agricultural year. Deities indeed of the Ifugao soil and its produce. Here at the Islamic Galleries of a National Museum, the objects speak of a rich artistic tradition, the tradition of Okir. Okir is a design language that is distinctly Maranao. Shared in various degrees with the Maguindanao and the Tausug, it is a visual language that speaks in flowing, foliate lines, curly cues, and undulating patterns. Art scholars point to the Naga, the great serpent dragon of Southeast Asian lore, as the inspiration for Okir designs and patterns. But the flowing serpent form has given birth to floral patterns, curvilinear abstractions, vivid color schemes. And as can be seen from the National Museum collection, Okir has decorated everything from utilitarian objects like food containers, ladles, boat pros and paddles to prestige objects like the Sarimanok. Okir is found on wood, brass, textile, even pottery. In the municipality of Tugaya, in Lanao, Okir continues to flow. Adorning surfaces of objects created by Tugaya's talented craftsmen. Tugaya's renown as a village of talented craftsmen goes back to the early 20th century when the royal houses of Lanao would commission objects from the craftsmen. Thus, the community established a tradition of handcrafting in wood, brass, silver and gold. All by craftsmen with their own specialties and sensibilities. To truly appreciate the forms, we must place them in the context of two aspects. The first is the Islamic tenet that forbade the depiction of human figures in art. The creative Maranao spirit responded by developing Okir, an artistic response to a strict religious tenet. The second factor is Maranao royal life. Much of this art is of a refined and courtly nature, used by datus and their women, princes and princesses, noble families. But royal patronage did not keep the ordinary Maranao from enjoying the artistic tradition.
Here in Tugaya, the present resounds with the buzz of that refined past. Carvers work wood into the stunning giant drums called tabu, ornamenting every bit of space with okir. The mythic Sari Manok is born again and again in the vibrant colors of the Maranao palette. Carpenters and inlay artists work together on chests, painstakingly inlaid with minute pieces of mother of pearl. Artisans combine the crafts of carving, casting, brass repoussé to create ceremonial daggers and kris. Gongs of all sizes are also cast and tuned. From cutting to shaping the gong, to forming the boss, and to final polishing and tuning. These individual pieces will come together to form the Kolintang Gong and Sam. Music that is both pleasing to hear, played on instruments, wonderful to look at. Tugaya is uh, being branded as the municipality in Lano del Sur that produced all kinds of uh, products uh, emanating from brass. These products are uh, becoming important because any house where there is a display of uh, brass, especially agung and other uh, taba or uh, tree made from brass, is a symbol of royalty from the Maranao community. It is a uh, syllable. Everybody wants to have a livelihood. Anywhere you go in the Philippines, where there are markets, you will find a Maranao and ask, who are, where are you from? He said, I am from Tugaya. Because we learn from that selling. We make and we sell. What makes Tugaya truly unique is that each and every barangay of the municipality has its own specialty. Because our uh, culture is not dead. As long as we live in this world, our culture is present. So we are happy. You visit uh, our houses. There is that okay, okay, okay. Anywhere, even myself, I have a small house. I have an okay because that symbolizes Royalty symbolizes culture and no other people in this world who has originated this ochre. We, only the Maranaos. To see Tugaya only as a municipality of craftsmen and artisans is to miss out on the importance of the technologies and processes that were developed here. Technologies like lost wax casting that produced more than just decorative objects. Canons like these Lantaka in the collection of the National Museum point to the ways in which indigenous skills and technical processes could also produce great weapons. The feared blades of the Islamic warriors, the Chris, the Baro, Kampilan, and Panabas, were produced with the same technology. In court life, in ordinary home life, in times of peace and war, the rich and dizzying variety of these objects meld both form and function. All these objects had a place in Maranao society, in the mosques, on boats, even in ordinary homes, and in the great community houses, the Torogan. The Torogan is the traditional home of the Maranao Datus, 
But more than just a home for his family, it was also a gathering place for the community of the Datu's followers. The large upper room was a kitchen, living room, bedroom, and consultation space. Okir announces its presence and traces its roots to the mythical Naga through the Panolo, the projecting beams that give the Torogan the appearance of a boat born on the backs of the mythic Naga. A Torogan house is a traditional house of the royal uh, families in uh, the province of Lanao del Sol. They are actually occupied by people of uh, noble ancestry. <coughs> the Sultan, the Radia Muda, the Bayan Labi, etc. It is different from uh, ordinary houses because that cannot be occupied by ordinary uh, person. Second, ladies are constructed for the Sultan himself. He just ordered that my house be constructed and people will uh, go into the scene and they will construct the house of the Sultan. This knowledge in constructing a house is uh, actually handed down from one generation to another. Even the location itself is selected on the basis of a strategic uh, position. Usually, a, a Torugan is constructed uh, uh, in a place which is not where uh, winds are not uh, very strong. Another one, this is the Torugan is the epicenter of the uh, Marano community because this is where political, social, economic, and religious activities of the Maranao are being discussed in the Torogan. In this inspiring Torogan, we can see a snapshot of local leadership and community relationships. But in the face of a changing Islamic philosophy affecting the entire world, what are the chances for the survival of the Torogan, as well as the other crafts we've seen? Many Maranaos came so enamored of the Arabic culture. They started aping the Taliban, they started aping the Muslims of Afghanistan, they started thinking that anything traditional is un Islamic. So they started wearing the hijab, covering women fully. That means there was no longer any spiritual basis for their traditions, because their traditions used to be inspired by traditional belief system. But now if you destroy the traditional belief system, there will be no more inspiration for them to continue with the art that they will produce as an expression of this traditional belief system. And therefore, it's not really the technology that is the problem. The, the problem is a worldview, a way of looking at life. Once it is destroyed, the whole cultural forms of expression will also disappear. Symbols of race and its ideals and beliefs, carved in wood, cast in metal, built from a synthesis of myth and tradition, practical knowledge and strict aesthetic. Symbols of a particular race or group, yes, but symbols that can be shared by all Filipinos as a continuing source of Dayao, our knowledge, our pride. <laughs>